Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Learning Kitchen I want to share with you my recipe for my veggie lasagna rolls or my grilled veggie lasagna rolls, whatever you want to call them. They're essentially lasagna that we're going to roll up and sound so much more work than it really is. They're really easy to make and the best part about these is that I eat, make this recipe with whatever I have left over. And I usually, when I light up the grill, since most times we use a charcoal grill, I don't want all the heat to go to waste, so I just grill a bunch of extra vegetables, keep them in the fridge and then just jazz them up throughout the, throughout the week in different dishes and this is one of the dishes we love and I make very often so I was thrilled to be able to share it with you. Let me take you over the ingredients so we can get started. You'll need some ricotta, I've got some grilled vegetables here, I've got some yellow squash, zucchini and eggplant but you can use any grilled vegetables that you like. I also have some crushed Italian tomatoes, small yellow onion and garlic that I've chopped, I've got an egg, I've got some fresh basil pesto, some shredded mozzarella, fresh parsley, lots of parmigiano, salt and pepper, olive oil, and you'll need your lasagna noodles. I actually have whole wheat lasagna noodles that I boiled until tender in salted water and then I just rinsed them under the cold water to stop them from cooking and I have them in a colander and I just toss them with like a tablespoon of oil just so that they don't all stick together. Now, we're going to get going on making the sauce first, but you want to get your oven preheated to 400 and get that out of the way. I've got a large skillet with high sides with some olive oil in there, and to that, I'm going to add my onion and my garlic. I'm going to add that at the same time, and I want this to sort of caramelize a little bit, but mo you know, I just want this to really cook down and um, so that the onions and the garlic don't have sort of that raw, uh, a raw bite to them. So. So easy. If you don't like eggplant, yellow squash, or zucchini, what vegetables do you like to grill? Grill some extras, keep them in your fridge, and make this because it's so, so good and it's so easy. So I'm going to get going on making the filling so that everything is going to be ready for us. I've got my ricotta. I'm going to add my vegetables that I've just given a nice chop to. Everything is about bite-sized pieces. I'm going to add in my parsley, lots of parsley. I'm going to add an egg just as a binder to hold everything together, some salt and pepper, go light on the salt just because the ricotta can be quite salty and we are going to be adding a little bit or a lot of freshly grated parmigiano, um, a good I'd say quarter cup or so. And I'm just mixing this with my spoon to mix my vegetables and my ricotta mixture together really, really well. So at this point, I have my filling completely done, I have my noodles cooking, all I'm going to do is work on my sauce which is so flavorful and so easy. If you don't want to make your own basil pesto, feel free to buy some from the grocery store but if you can help it, buy the kind that's fresh, that's usually you can find it in the, um, in the produce aisle, nice fresh basil pesto. Don't buy the kind that's in the same aisle as your canned tomatoes because that's not really that good. So. I like to make my own because it's like, it's summer, it's the beautiful fresh basil that's growing like crazy and I can make as much or as little as I want and I can always have some on hand by putting it in the freezer. So we have the filling done, I'm just going to wait for my onions to cook down a bit, I'm going to give them just a small pinch of salt to help them soften a bit faster and then we'll be ready to add our tomatoes. Gorgeous. You can tell they're lightly golden, the onions are translucent, but nothing's too dark and you want to make sure that that doesn't happen because if you take garlic a little too far, it becomes bitter. Now I'm going to add in my crushed tomatoes. I'm going to add them, oh, nice and thick, I love that. I love when tomatoes aren't too watery. I'm going to just give this a really good stir. and I'm going to let this simmer over about medium low heat for about 20 minutes. I'm going to season this with some salt and pepper. I do like my, I like a, a good amount of black pepper. My nonna doesn't. My nonna says black pepper repeats. Um, I like black pepper. So you can add as much or as little as you want. And I'm just going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes or so and we'll be ready to uh, get going on rolling our lasagna, lasagna noodles. My sauce has been simmering for about 15 minutes and it is ready to go. Now I'm going to add some pesto to this to instantly give it such gorgeous flavor. And again, I love basil and to me tomato and basil is just a match made in heaven. And in the summer months I tend to, um, I'm able to find 
a lot of basil really, really easy. So I make tons of fresh pesto to keep on hand for just about anything. So I'm just gonna stir this in. At this point, I can completely turn this off because everything is pretty much cooked and it is going to bubble away in the oven for a little bit as well. So I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to just, I wanna just stir this really well to make sure that the pesto is fully mixed in with my tomato sauce. I'm taking some of my sauce and I'm just ladling some of it on, well, in the bottom of my casserole dish because that way I can just start assembling my lasagna, my lasagna rolls and putting them straight in here instead of having to place them on another plate. So, we have this done. I've got my lasagna noodles here. These are whole wheat lasagna noodles. I boiled them for about four and a half minutes. If they tear a little bit, it is perfectly fine. And this is how easy it is. You just take a nice big spoonful. I'm a big believer in a little extra filling rather than a little too little. So if this filling comes out a little bit, who cares? It's all gonna bubble away and be beautiful at the end. So then you just roll like so and place them seam side down like that. And then you just continue to do the rest of them. Now I was able to get a good, uh, let's see, guatotorodisha. Like a good um, 20 of them. I have a smaller one back there and I have a bigger one back here because I want to make sure everything is one single layer. So I've already finished up that one. I'm going to take my remaining sauce. If you have a bigger, uh, bigger cast, uh, cast iron, <laughs> casserole dish, then you will need to do two different ones. But I just used one little one and one big one and we are gonna be ready to pop this into the oven. I'm just going to get all my sauce out of here and then just sort of smear it evenly over the top. And now I'm going to take my mozzarella that I have shredded and this is the sort of dried mozzarella that's not in water only because I don't want this to be too sort of wet and soupy. I want the top to get all bubbly and golden brown. And um, that's why I prefer to use this kind, but I do prefer to shred it myself because I think the pre-shredded just doesn't melt um, the same, in my opinion. And then a good grating of Parmigiano all over the top. And now we're gonna pop this baby into the oven at 400 for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the top is a beautiful golden brown color. And it's bubble away, it's got nice everything, it gets all hot and bubbly and delicious. And then we're gonna let it cool for a good 15 minutes before we are ready to serve. My lasagna rolls were in the oven for around 30 minutes. I let it go just a little bit further because I really like the little crispy edges. I feel like that's like the best part right around there. Mm. And then I have let this cool for about 10 minutes so that now I'm ready to dig in. And if you could just smell this place in this kitchen, it smells incredible. And I have my little pan on the side as well. I'm going to serve myself up. Oh, I've got my fork here. Look at that, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. I'm gonna serve myself one just for now and then wait for dinner to have the rest. I'm so excited. And how easy were they? I mean, really. And this is one of those recipes, I'm making a mess as I cut into this, but I'm gonna let this cool for a second as I talk to you. This is one of those recipes that I like to call like, you know, do them in, it's like a do in stage kind of recipe. You can make the sauce one day, you have the leftover vegetables from another day, you can boil the noodles last minute, and then you can pretty much have everything sort of assembled and then pull it all together and pop it into the oven. So it really doesn't get any easier than that. The mouth is salivating, so I'm just going to go in for this one. It's gonna be hot though, so give me a minute. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That. I feel like I have something on my face. That is absolutely incredible, and it couldn't be any easier. I hope you enjoy spending time with me to get this recipe and others. Go to laurainthekitchen.com. If you do remake this, make sure you tag me in a picture on social media because I would love to see your recreation of it. And let me know what your favorite sort of lasagna combination is. Enjoy spending time with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.